follow immediately with uh, Todd Winterhalt, who is a Group Vice President, International Business Development at EDC, which was the other box on that slide. Uh, Todd joined uh, EDC in 2002 and has more than 20 years of business development, risk assessment, trade policy, human resource experience. He was appointed Vice President International Business Development in September 2010, with responsibilities for EDC growing network of international representation in key sectors, in key centers, including, and as you, you read in the, in the paper, there's three lines of including. So it's very impressive uh, from uh, China all the way to South America and South Africa. So <clears throat> Todd, please. Thanks, Benoit, and good afternoon, everyone. I'll uh, follow Pierre's lead, I think, and try and keep this relatively brief for you. Uh, I have no uh, presentation to share. Rather, I'll just read a couple of, uh, of prepared notes here and, and hopefully give you a little bit of, uh, of insight into what EDC does a little bit more specifically. Uh, I'm fortunate enough to follow Minister Fast and now Pierre, who, who've started down that path for me. So uh, I'll save us all a little bit of time. Um, perhaps the easiest way to describe EDC is we are Canada's official export credit agency. For those of you who have uh, business activities or, or relations with other countries, uh, very similar to what a COFAS from France, Hermes in Germany, or, or USXM uh, do. Really uh, an arm of the government, uh, solely owned by the Government of Canada, as is CCC, with the sole mandate of trying to promote, grow, and encourage Canadian exporters and investors to get beyond their traditional markets, so to get beyond the United States and, and Western Europe into more of the emerging markets, uh, which certainly includes Africa. So I'll try and leave you with just maybe three quick points today. First, a little bit more in terms of the introduction of EDC, why we see Africa as really uh, the place for Canadian business today, not uh, any longer in the future, but, but immediately. And then thirdly, maybe talk a little bit around some of those tools that we've been discussing that can help Canadian business and African business connect uh, and really do more together. So perhaps the simplest way to describe what EDC does is really in, in two veins. The first is trade facilitation. And that's when you have a Canadian company, an exporter, or an investor who approaches EDC with an opportunity that they have identified in another market. When that's the case, we can bring our financial services to bear, whether it's a loan, a guarantee, an insurance uh, product, or even some equity uh, to a project. That's what we call facilitation. There's an existing relationship between a Canadian supplier and a foreign or international buyer, and so we can help make that a reality with our financial product. That also allows us to mitigate some of the risk, as Minister Fast talked about, whether it be on the receivable side or a political risk, that's where ADC can step in and really help out an existing relationship. And that's important. But I think it's the second piece that we really come into our own, and that's what we would call trade creation. So this is where we take advantage of our 16 international offices, 17 next year with the opening of our Johannesburg representation, and take that information that we garner from our, our in-market reps and staff and bring that back to the Canadian exporter base and say, here's a variety of projects, initiatives, opportunities that you may not be aware of. And so we actually then serve to really be the connector between the international opportunity and the Canadian supply to that opportunity. And to help then mitigate that risk with our financial products, we can often take it to the next step. So our partners uh, at the Trade Commissioner Service are excellent at kind of opening those doors initially, making Canadian companies aware of some of the regulatory, legal, or other challenges that they may face. But when things get to a point where there's an actual concrete opportunity or a transaction, EDC's role is then to come in as a bank or as an insurance company and really help make that a reality for the Canadian company. To give you an idea in terms of scope, uh, year on year, EDC serves about 7,500 Canadian companies who are active in, in international trade. That number is, is fairly stagnant, I have to say, and I think something that we'd really like to see grow, and in particular, to see the number of Canadian companies that we help do business in Africa grow. Of that 7,500, only about 450 to 500 annually are active in Africa. We could see that number easily doubling, and we hope that through some of our initiatives, such as opening a representation in, in South Africa, uh, will really help us uh, accomplish that. In terms of the average number of, uh, of transactions, we see anywhere between 45 and 60 transactions for those 400 plus companies. 
That's spread throughout the continent. So about 46 companies out of 54 last year had EDC support in terms of a Canadian project or, or transaction, representing about $1.7 billion on a three-year average in trade from Canada to Africa, where EDC has an ability to support it. So that's kind of where we are today. I think what's much more important is where we see things going, and it is the level of growth and opportunity, really in, in much of Sub-Saharan Africa in particular, where we see uh, a lot more that Canadian companies can do. And we all know the stats, and so I won't belabor them, but certainly to see a tripling of the economy since 2000, to see seven out of the 10 fastest growing economies in the world, all resident in, in Sub-Saharan Africa, and the almost $100 billion in infrastructure spend planned by a variety of African governments over the next five to 10 years is something that's simply too large to be ignored. And these are opportunities that are present today. So we would see those across a variety of sectors very briefly. There's some of the ones already talked about, infrastructure, transportation, but I think also importantly, information communications technologies, healthcare, education, the minister mentioned, uh, as well as clean tech. So what I'll leave you with is maybe a couple of, of examples of the tools that EDC has with its in, is it, it's in our toolkit to really help do more in Africa. And in particular, I'll leave you with one perhaps example, uh, something we call a, a poll financing, which is a financial vehicle that we have at EDC. It's essentially a loan or a buyer financing where through our contacts in market, EDC will partner with a, a major African buyer. So we've done a number of these facilities over the last few years with some very well-known names uh, in the African economy, such as Transnet, MTN out of Nigeria, NAMPAC out of South Africa, where through our relationship with these borrowers, we advance them money. We give them some financial capacity to then look at increasing their levels of Canadian procurement. So where they have a capital expenditure need, they know they're going to have to go out and procure services or goods from a company or a country, by providing a little bit of financial support to that buyer, we then encourage an additional connection beyond the CFOs, beyond the financing elements of these companies into their procurement arm. And so by having that relationship in place, we then kind of skip a few steps, much as CCC does on a government to government basis, we can then do that in the commercial space. So with that strong relationship, with the financing or the insurance policy in place, we then find uh, the introductions between the Canadian suppliers and the foreign procurers to be much easier, to be much more streamlined. There's a relationship that's established there. It's not starting something from scratch. And so in that way, we can really advance the, the cause of Canadian small and medium-sized exporters to take advantage of these opportunities across a variety of markets. So that would be the one product I would say that EDC really has in its toolkit that can advance what we're all trying to do here, I think, uh, in the room. The second piece I'll leave you and, and then I'll end is really to, I think, underscore the importance of partnerships. And we've talked a lot about it already al along this panel, but certainly as we look to really helping Canadians better understand the opportunities in the African space, it's through partnership, and it's through partnership with other financial institutions, perhaps IFIs like the World Bank, the African Development Bank, Africa Exim, others who have been present here at the conference this week, but then going beyond that into partnerships with the trade commissioners in market, with our colleagues at CCC, as well as with uh, local banks uh, in place. And so again, I'll, I'll end with an example in South Africa where EDC's relationship with, with parties like Rand Merchant Bank, with Standard Bank, and with others of that ilk, really served to benefit the Canadian exporter who's looking for that additional uh, bit of comfort, I think, around going to markets that are fresh for, for many folks. So I'll leave it there and uh, certainly look forward to any questions or comments you may have later on. Thank you. Bye.